Hello everyone, it's old Guardian here. Co-op content has finally arrived at Warcraft Rumble with Siege of Stormwind has opened today and it has been a ton of fun. I mean, truly, truly an enjoyable experience, although there's also a bunch of bugs. However, this time the bugs are actually helping people make this even easier. So I guess just do it while you can before it becomes more difficult. Either way, in this video, I'm going to take a look at all of the bosses in Stormwind and a little bit of what they do and what kind of armies you should use to counter them with and show you gameplay footage of all the bosses as well. The first boss in Stormwind is General Marcus, and General Marcus's army consists of Null Brute, Griffin Rider, Harpies, Huntress, Mountaineer and Murloc Tide Hunters, and then there's of course a bunch of Stormwind footmen all over the place. And when Marcus enters the second phase of the encounter, Marcus is going to charge and take down the top two towers and summon four footmen, two of them melee and two of them ranged from both sides. And I found armored units particularly powerful against General Marcus because every single mini there deals physical damage. So armored tanks can just take a lot of punishment. So for example, I did Marcus with this Gromash army using Grom and then Frostwolf Shaman to give Grom armored. And then trying to get some of that AOE against all of those footmen, pyromancers, even getting some chimeras, even some bat riders shooting from a bow. And that's General Marcus. The second boss is Innkeeper Allison. Innkeeper Allison's army consists of Device Bandits, Firehammer, Footman, Harvest Golem, Huntress and Mountaineer. When you get Allison to the second phase, there's going to be barrels that take down towers and they also explode at the tower and take down all units, including flying units. So this is a little bit different than the Grimongos barrels that leave flying units untouched. And then there's going to be fire elementals spawning from the fireplace to the right. And then there's murlocs and chickens coming from the entrance to the left. It's a little tricky to figure out what happens in which phase because the phasing mechanics are currently not working quite properly. But overall, those are the phase mechanics that Allison has. And for Allison, you want to have some flying units and some physical damage, like here I have harpies and troll to beat up those fire elementals, and some AoE against the chickens and the murlocs, so here I have plague farmer and I also have whelp eggs, and those can take down Allison. And the final boss in the siege is High Lord Bolvar. Bolvar's army consists of footmen, griffin rider, harpies, holy nova, prowler and Vorgan. And when you face Highlord Bova, he's going to cast a Consecration that's going to take down all of the towers and leave a damage area effect on around those towers for a little while, then it goes away and then you were able to push again. And I found that once that happens, it's easier to just push through the middle because sometimes Bolvar seems to consecrate very, very often. But again, I'm not really certain because those facing mechanics are working not quite properly right now. Sometimes Bolvar doesn't consecrate at all. Sometimes he just keeps consecrating over and over again. So once we get a bug-free version of the siege, we'll need to take a closer look at what's going to be the most effective way to do it. But I've been trying to get through all the mechanics as best as I can. And because Bolvar has a lot of footmen, then area damage, especially Pyromancer, is very effective against Bolvar. And this is the army that I used against Bolvar myself. And this is what all of this looks like in action. And here we go against General Marcus. So General Marcus has all of these footmen behind those barriers, but the key dropping some well backs out there they can distract the footmen maybe even destroy some of them even after the nerf well backs still do a fine job there and i was trying to cycle so that i can get my armored grom going so gromash now with the power of armored all the damage in this fight is physical everything is physical damage all i would need is to get a little bit of something anti-air there to take down that griffin rider and my pyromancer is a little bit late there but it looks to be okay overall after after all yeah Grom isn't taking too much damage at all and we're able to take the tower and push on and yeah would probably want to push from both sides a little bit here because now what happened was that from the other side the hunters came in and was able to start taking the tower but nothing another armored chrome push cannot handle so more armored chromashes and as you can see all the damage is physical so armored is just such a powerful asset in this one here we go again chrome is punching in 
Oracus should have faced at this point, and that facing mechanic sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, so we'll see how it goes in this one. Now I have another powerful Grombush going in. I have some towers. Everything is looking pretty good. Both towers there taken. More armored Chromashi is coming. And then Marcus is doing some charges. Char charges over there, but Chroms are in. And Marcus is not looking too healthy. Chromash is in. And now he decides to face with the big charge that breaks all the towers. So we finally got to see that one too in this video. And also summons some footmen from the sides. But because we still get to keep the center tower, you only lose the top two towers of the charge. Then having some tools to get you back to the fight from the center tower. Having some AoE that's going to be ready to challenge the footmen. And that is going to be fine and General Marcus is going to fall. And the second boss is Innkeeper Allison. And here I really like to take both towers at the start. Because once Innkeeper Allison gets into another phase, then there's going to be those barrels. Barrels will roll and destroy a tower, but they roll one by one, so they don't take down both towers at the same time. Which means that if you control both of the towers, then barrel rolls, and then you might even be able to just attack Allison really quickly and kill Allison before anything else happens. Or at least you will be able to take back the tower when you hold the other tower already, so you're not under as much pressure. And here we're taking both towers, and after that we're getting ready to send some troops. As those footmen are coming, but harpies, so many harpies, both players having harpies in their armies, is actually quite powerful because just look at the sheer number of harpies that are coming here. Classic Quillbore turning Alison around, and here actually... There's going to be so much poison from all of those harpies that Allison does not even have time to face. And sometimes it works like that. And finally it's High Lord Bulvar time. And let's go. Bulvar sends a few footmen in the middle at the start. And Bulvar's towers are Dragon Towers, so it's a little bit different. But what I want to do here, I want to counter the footmen of course. And then I want to get to work on those towers. Preferably I take all of the towers at the start to control all of the gold veins, so that all the gold is under control. And then we're going to make a push at Bolvar, and then we're going to see if Bolvar is going to face or not. Obviously, once everything is fixed, then you can expect Bolvar to enter the next phase. And just look at the power of Chimera there. Chimera against the Dragon Tower, doing a pretty good job. Plague Farmer is another one that's really, really great here because Plague Farmer can just kill those dragon towers from out of their reach. So now we're taking some towers. There's a bunch of elite footmen coming from that side. Let's drop some Welbecks. Welbecks still excellent in Siege of Stormwind even after the nerf. There's just so many good uses for them because there's so many ground units that can't shoot air and then, then Welbecks get to just do many, many great things. So now we have all the towers here, and we can start to work on pushing against Bolvar. Some of the footmen keep appearing. And the footmen, in this one there's three melee footmen and one ranged, but Welbex, dropping Welbex on them can actually... Sometimes, I think I dropped them in a little bit of wrong spot there maybe, I think they should be able to take down the ranged footman at least sometimes. But here we go, Bolvar is defending. I'm trying to make a bit of a push. Harpies, well, when we have dragon towers, then harpies are no threat, because harpies cannot handle dragon towers. Sending out some chimeras, sending out some plague farmers. Everything looking quite good. And now Bolvar should enter the next phase, the indicator is there, but consecration is not happening here right now. I would have expected Bolvar to consecrate already, but now Bolvar is waiting a little bit. 
let's see. I'll try to make make better footage once these are actually functioning as intended. But for now, this is okay. We're actually trying to wait here a little bit to see if Paul were, were so kind as to show us the other phases. So we would be able to able to fight against that because we had developed a strategy at this point on what we were planning to do when the new phases arrive. Go, we push a little bit on that tower. Okay, tower is taken, that's wonderful. The dragon tower is defending as well. Pretty, pretty sweet. A couple of hits in the boulevard. Another track is that going in. Right, here we go, here we go. Making a push and... Now Bolvar decided that it's good time to face and then the consecration happens. It kills every unit around Bolvar and it instantly takes all the towers. And there's also a consecration effect around the towers. So if you try to attack the towers too quickly, like you see those harpies went out there, then they are going to be destroyed. So you need to wait until the consecration effect is gone before you push. And here, I'm not sure how it's supposed to work because sometimes it just keeps consecrating all the time, pretty much. So you just can never take the towers. But that's why we devised the plan that once the consecration has happened, we're just going to push through the middle and try to get past that middle tower and reach Bolvar. So that is the plan. A powerful push through the middle, ignore the sides. And I was thinking whether I would use those well packs to try to try to defend a little bit. I end up going with a chimera instead. And we're doing a fairly powerful push through the middle. And here we go, here we go. Another consecration happens. Yeah, but this time we have the dragon set going through the middle. That's what's meant to happen. But now another consecration happened again, and that actually ended up killing the Drakisat because of the consecration effect, which is quite a powerful effect indeed. But we're still working on this. We're trying to get enough power to get a good push going through the middle. Now just taking some chests, defending a little bit for the time being. Getting ready. Footmen are coming. More footmen are coming. Troll with the regeneration talent. Another excellent, excellent mini for this one. Because it is able to able to withstand a lot of punishment from the dragon towers. Just take them out. Okay, here we go. Well, that trolls actually with the poison talent. Anyway, it started to get into overtime. Those cause repeated consecrations have made it very difficult to progress. But now we're making now we're going to make the really big push just through the middle. We need to defend a little bit so the hobbies won't kill the base or anything. Now big push going straight through the middle. Helping it a little bit with unbounds, helping it with all sorts of fast minis. Here we go, just swarm to the mid. And we managed to take the middle tower, and then we get an attack going with Drakisat, with other minis, and Bolvar is going to go down like this. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.